Well, I want to return this morning to a thought that I began right at the beginning of these wilderness diaries. Uh, and that was, uh, I think the first one I did was thinking about themes of isolation and, and solitude. And, and I was talking there uh, about how, although isolation from one another isn't a good thing for us, that I was encouraging us to see it creatively, to uh, see times of isolation actually as an opportunity for solitude. Because solitude with God is always a good thing. It's actually a vital part of our walk with Jesus. God always calls us actually to spend time apart with him, apart and separate from the busyness and, and the noise of our everyday lives, that we might hear his voice, that, that he might bring things to the surface in us that, that, that are crooked and he wants to straighten out, or things that are wrong that he wants us to bring to the cross of his son, that they might be cleansed and that we might be transformed and changed. Uh, often he wants to touch things, uh, perhaps wounds in our hearts that have left us just a little bit stuck or are stopping us from uh, being able to keep our eyes focused on all that lies ahead. He, he often likes to bring these things to the surface so that in his glorious and good and loving presence, uh, we might know healing or might have chains that have bound us uh, broken that we might know greater freedom. Solitude with God is always a good thing. But isolation consistently in the New Testament is held up as something that, that's dangerous and potentially very unhealthy for us spiritually as God's people. I think I just alluded to that uh, in that very first video. Uh, but it is a, a, a recurrent theme within the scriptures. We're not called just as individuals uh, following our Lord. We're, we're saved by Christ and by sacrifice on the cross for us to become part of his body. That's what the New Testament tells us, that we are members of the body of Christ. We're interconnected. We cannot function spiritually and to God's glory with as as loners, we cannot be isolated from one another. We're not just individual sheep on a hill. We're, we're saved into a flock under our good shepherd, Jesus. And so we read things in the New Testament, like in Hebrews 10, let us not give up the habit of meeting together, but let us meet together all the more as you see the day approaching. It's essential for us that we continue to gather with God's worshipping people, where we hear God's word, where we know uh, God's spirit active in the community of, of God's believers, where we grow in the image of Jesus, not on our own, but, but together, shaped by him. And there's obvious uh, limitations to how we can do that at present, uh, and they're going to continue to lesser or greater extent. Uh, for the next while. We don't know how long, uh, but we can still come together. We must continue to function as God's people, not be isolated from one another, in particular, as I say, from the worshipping community of God's people who gather to hear God's voice and seek his face and know the ministry of his spirit, which he brings to us as part of the body of Christ, a committed family of believers. You know, this point was uh, impressed upon me very early on in lockdown. An interesting thing happened. Uh, Hannah and I were following various different uh, devotions. One of them was a, a Lent one that we were doing together as a family. One was something I was reading, One that something that Hannah was reading separately. And right at the beginning of lockdown, interestingly, just in the space of of a few days, this uh, theme of isolation came up across these three different readings, just independent from one another, not connected at all in what was going on in the in the present day without any knowledge. The, the writers didn't have any knowledge of what was going on in the present day. But all of them warned of the dangers of isolation as believers, isolation from 
God's family, isolation from gathering together to worship God, to meet together, to have fellowship is deeply unhealthy for us as Christians and we need to do all that we can to combat it. We must not give the habit, give up the habit of coming together to seek his face. I, when I read those readings, it came early on in lockdown. It seemed deeply um, ironic to us. You know, here we were being uh, going into a, a period of imposed self-isolation, really, albeit for good reasons, for loving reasons, to, to protect others and society at large. But here we were with this warning from God. Uh, isolation places us in a very vulnerable position spiritually. And we need to be aware of that and we need to combat it. But I haven't really uh, returned uh, to that theme until now, uh, when just over the weekend I felt the Lord highlighting again in, in an interesting way, but really through uh, a couple of incidents that in themselves may seem amusing. They were amusing just um, in themselves, uh, but I felt that God was speaking through them. Let me tell you what happened to me over the weekend. On on Saturday morning, I did uh, what I uh, most mornings do first thing. I, I went straight out to our duck house, which is right at the very back, and um, opened the duck house. The ducks are all wrapped up and, and protected from any predators at, at night. You know, the door is closed. They're safely all together. I, I open up the door when the light comes and, and they they rush out. I, I give them their food for the day and then I, I collect their eggs. And on Saturday morning, I, I collected the eggs and just laid them down on the ground. I, and then as, as is often the case, you know, my mind started wandering. Uh, I, I was fixed on other things. I was distracted from the task in hand. I, I walked away and, and forgot to take the eggs with me. And I got to the back door of the manse and I suddenly remembered, oh, I forgot the forgot the eggs. I, I mean, only at most 30 seconds must have passed by. But by the time I got back to the, the back gate uh, to retrieve the eggs, I, I, I saw a, a, a dirty great crow flying off with one of the eggs in its ugly beak. Uh, unbeknown to me, it, it must have been the whole time just watching me from a distance. I had no idea it was present and watching. Yet I took my eyes off just for a few seconds, under a minute, and it swooped in. It swooped in to steal and to rob. Well, the next morning, Sunday morning, I went out, same uh, routine, go out to the duck house, I open up, they fly out, feed them. Uh, this, more, this time I, I, I remember what happened before. I think, right, I'll, I'll leave the door open on the house, the house, the door... Uh, to the duck house is open, but I thought I'll leave the eggs in because I don't want to attract any attention from that dirty great crow. And uh, and this time, last time I'd been totally unaware of the crow's presence. This time it was it was brazen. It, it, it flew down and just perched itself on the wall and instantly, you know, clap it away. It's afraid of my presence. Guess what happened next? Once again, my mind gets distracted. It starts wandering off on uh, perhaps tasks that lie ahead of me. I, I walk away without the eggs. Remember this time they're not on the ground. They're, they're still in the house. I, I get back to the man's door. Once again, at that point, I remember I've forgotten the eggs. I, I turn round. No sooner as I have I turned round. And I see the dirty great crow flying off again with an egg in its ugly beak. This time it had actually gone into the open door of the house and taken the egg. Such is its very clear purpose to steal what it sees as a treat. What do I share that story with you? What do what do I believe the Lord was wanting to alert me to through it? Well, let me read uh, these words from the end of First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. It says this, be alert and of sober mind, or, or be alert and be clear-headed. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. 
resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Be alert, we're told in the scriptures. In the, interestingly, the context of the passage is all about how we, we function together as, as a family of believers. Uh, how we're humble within uh, a, a church, especially towards uh, relationships, younger and, and older uh, leaders and not leaders and so on. And there's a reference here to the family of believers. We're to be alert because there is an enemy. There is an enemy who is very attentive to us, even when we're we're unaware of his presence. He's prowling around, and right from the beginning, he's been a thief. He seeks to rob and steal the very good things of God that are within us. He'll do all that he can to oppose the work of Christ in us and to weaken the church which he resists and which he hates. Our response to that is is not to be at all fearful. Because the scriptures tell us that uh, he who is in us, the Lord Jesus Christ, is greater than he who is in the world. He's greater than, than the enemy, the devil, who prowls around like a lion. We're not to be afraid. Uh, the book of James says, submit to God. And the, the devil resist, submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee. He'll flee just as fast as that crow fled away when I, when I clapped it away. But listen to this. We need to stay sober, clear headed. We need to be alert. And, and anyone that's watched any uh, David Attenborough nature programs will, will know the pattern of, of a lion when it hunts, just like any great predator. What they seek to do is they, they seek to isolate a part of uh, an animal from, from the rest, from the crowd, so that it's on its own, uh, so that it can uh, defend itself, so that it becomes easy prey. Well, similarly, as, as God's people, we, we become so much more vulnerable when we stop meeting together, when we stop gathering to hear uh, God's voice, when we stop coming together as the, the people of God. We, we need the body of Christ. We need to uh, praise him regularly. We need to come together to hear the, the ministry of the word of God and know the ministry of God's spirit which works through his people. It's not an optional add-on for us as the people of God. It, it's necessary for us. It's necessary for us that we might fix our eyes on Jesus that we might not uh, take our eyes off the goal, even for a second. We might not be distracted, but that we might stand firm so that nothing of the good things of God within us might be robbed, that nothing of our faith in Christ might be destroyed, but we might persevere in him. Let me just close uh, this thought with how Peter closes just in the very next verse, he says this, And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you've suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. God bless you.